Rise, man. The Force will be with you. Always. Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel, I'm Star Wars Meg, here to give you another Mandalorian Season 2 update, and as always to provide you with all of the news from a galaxy far far away. As always, please may I ask you to hit like down below to subscribe to my channel if you're brand new and also hit the notification bell to be alerted each and every time I post a new video. Before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. They help to make this channel possible so I can keep coming back every day to give you more and more updates. So without too much jibber jabber, let's get into the news. Our first news article comes from Inverse and they're speaking about Boba Fett in Season 2. Their title states the Mandalorian Season 2 could be Boba Fett's redemption arc. So they write, So now that Fett has returned for the Mandalorian Season 2, the original Star Wars badass may get what fans of yesteryear could have never imagined. Boba Fett may get a redemption story that could rival Darth Vader's, and in the process it could finally explain a huge chunk of the bounty hunter's backstory that is still missing, his connection to the Mandalorian. Mandalorians. If you're still unconvinced that Boba Fett is essential to understanding Star Wars' fandom, consider this. The initial reason why The Mandalorian was exciting in the first place is that the main character dresses like Boba Fett. What if the show had been called The Bounty Hunter and the leading character dressed like Boosh? Yes, nobody would care. The reason people got jazzed about The Mandalorian was the visage of Boba Fett was baked into the aesthetic of menacing Star Wars things we all love. In fairness, this also kind of proves that Boba Fett himself wasn't the thing that people love, but rather the Mandalorian armor itself and what it symbolized for the Star Wars fan community. Could the Mandalorian season 2 change that though? Could the return of Fett in this new set of episodes actually make his character well, to put it bluntly, interesting? In the original trilogy, the reason why Boba Fett was compelling was partly that so little was known about him. Arguably, this is why he became popular in the 90s. Plus, because Fett was connected to the non-political side of Star Wars, his exploits played out like armor roll versions of what Han Solo and Lando Calrissian might have done before joining the Rebellion. In the comic book storyline of Twin Engines of Destruction, Boba Fett goes after a bounty hunter named Jodo Cast, who's impersonating him in order to make more money. This storyline typifies why people thought Boba Fett was interesting. He presented a side to Star Wars that was neither good nor evil, which is pretty weird when you think about how heavy-handed Star Wars is otherwise. George Lucas retroactively elevated Boba Fett's importance by not only revealing his father Jango Fett, but also revealing that Fett was the clone template for Palpatine's entire clone army. There's mixed evidence to suggest George Lucas always intended Fett to have this status, but when you look at the way Fett was developed in the 80s, it's pretty clear that was never planned. It's important to note that George Lucas made the Fett an integral part of Star Wars, which was kind of his way of throwing the fans who hated the Phantom Menace a bone. It's easy to overlook this now, but Jango Fett vs Obi-Wan Kenobi was a huge deal in 2002's Attack of the Clones. That film gave us a little kid version of Boba Fett, which honestly brings us back full circle. In Attack of the Clones, Boba Fett saw his father Jango murdered by Mace Windu in front of him. This single scene suddenly created a huge backstory for the silent bounty hunter fans who had loved him since 1980. Like it or not, Attack of the Clones humanized Boba Fett and made his story parallel to Anakin's. The difference being Anakin was saved by the Jedi and Fett's life was destroyed by them. If you track Boba Fett's canonical biography from Attack of the Clones forward, some of his more merciless activities in the 90s ceased to exist. Essentially, the character of Boba Fett was overwritten by the prequels and the Clone Wars. Sure, he was still a criminal and a killer, but he's not as one note as he had previously been. That said, other than his origins, the consequences of Boba Fett's humanization were never really explored. Yes, he appeared as a pissed off tween in the Clone Wars, but that was about it. Django and Boba's connections to the real Mandalorians have always been shady. According to real canon and the Mandalorians we met in the Clone Wars, Django was not a Mandalorian and only wore the Mandalorian armor. But everything about bringing back Boba Fett to a series called The Mandalorian seems to suggest that the Fets actually do have a legitimate claim to Mando heritage. This is why Mandalorian Season 2 could be a redemption story for Boba Fett. So it's a very lengthy article, but I really thoroughly enjoyed it. You let me know what you think in the comments about this. Could Season 2 be Boba Fett's redemption? And now we move on to one which talks about C-3PO and how The Mandalorian Season 2's Chapter 9 actually honours the character. So this is from Screen Rant and they write, The Mandalorian Season 2's Crate Dragon Death honours C-3PO. 
So they write, the death of the crate dragon in season 2 of Mando acts as a neat reference to C-3PO's early trek across the sands of Tatooine in A New Hope. Although the Marshal represents the Crate Dragon's live-action Star Wars debut as a living, breathing animal, the creature is actually one of the earliest alien species ever to grace George Lucas's fictional galaxy. After C-3PO and R2-D2 split up in 1977's original Star Wars movie, the anxious gold droid shovels past the great long skeleton of a very dead beast. The bones were subsequently revealed to have belonged to a crate dragon and the Mandalorian season 2 finally shows what the animal looks like in its full bantha munching glory. The appearance of the crate dragon itself is a callback to the early days of Star Wars, but the manner of its death is a further reminder of C-3PO's lonely journey. After imploding, the crate dragon collapses on its side, stretching out in the same position as the skeleton C-3PO encountered. This was a neat little easter egg for the OG fans. And finally, we talk about something that's been cropping up on the internet over the last 24 hours. Basically, in Chapter 9, a lot of people thought they saw Darth Maul's voice actor in the background on Mos Pelgo, but this has now been debunked. So this article states, Darth Maul actor confirms if he'll join the Mandalorian for Season 2 amid rumours of evil cameo. Disney Plus viewers were absolutely convinced that they saw the actor in the background of the first episode of season 2, out of his Darth Maul attire. However, the actor on screen was actually Josh Moreno, who wrote on Twitter, when the Star Wars fandom thinks you're Sam Witwer, but you're actually just villager number 4. He then shared a picture of him stood next to a TV screen showing his scene in the first episode and wrote, Proof. Sam then confirmed he hadn't been on the show, replying to Josh, I wish news outlets would, you know, do their due diligence and research that my hair isn't blonde, but hey. Since his role in the Star Wars prequel films, Sam has voiced Darth Maul on a number of other occasions, including Star Wars The Clone Wars, Rebels, and Solo A Star Wars Story. While he didn't elaborate on whether he would actually show up on The Mandalorian at some point, he previously revealed how impressed he was by the Space Western. Revealing executive producer Dave Filoni had shared some plot details with him, Sam told Star Wars Holocron, there are things that Dave has coming in The Mandalorian Season 2 that are going to blow people's minds. And then he goes on to say, because the thing is, Dave Filoni and George Lucas always had the same instincts when it came to this. So yeah guys, big things are teased for The Mandalorian Season 2 and Chapter 10 drops tomorrow if you're watching this, obviously the day I release it. If not, then you've probably already seen it if you're watching this from the future. So I'm Star Wars Meg and I'm wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day. No matter where you dwell in the galaxy guys, have a good one.